Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new around here, my name is Ron and today I'm going to be building my IKEA Millsbo cabinet slash greenhouse. So I finally snatched an IKEA Millsbo cabinet. And although I do have an IKEA like 10 minutes down the street from me, it took a whole year for it to be in stock and for me to be able to actually get one. Today, I'm gonna to be putting the cabinet together by myself. I hear that two people will actually make it super easy, but I'm kind of up for the challenge today. I'm gonna to be setting up the very typical way. I was inspired by Wild Fern's video where she has two pegboards, one at the top and one at the bottom, and there's only one shelf in between. Although the shelf does come with four shelves if you count like the very bottom. I also bought some of the accessories from Ikea Scatis line and I will show you what they are. And I also have a bunch of accessories from like Amazon and Home Depot and Lowe's and stuff like that. So let me show you all of those accessories and then we can go ahead and build a shelf. Shelf. Cabinet. Okay, so the IKEA Millsbo cabinet comes in two boxes and they're pretty heavy. So if you're planning on picking one up, you should definitely have another person with you to help carry these two heavy boxes. And then over here, those are the two pegboards and they should come with hardware already. And I also picked up some of these hooks. These are suction hooks. I'm already using one in my shower because I ended up buying a squeegee for my shower door, but I'm hoping this will work out in the cabinet. I have two of these little cup thingies from the Scatis line. And then I got four of these shelves, also from Scatis. I know these are gonna come in very handy because they can hold up to four inch pots. So I bought four and I'm going to be using two on the top shelf and two on the bottom shelf. But I also got this little tray of Kuggis. I love their names because I can just pronounce them however I want, right? Kuggis, Kugis. But I got this one because I'm planning on using it to bottom water some plants. Okay, so those are the IKEA accessories. Now I'm gonna show you all of the other non-IKEA accessories that I got. I got some Gorilla mounting tape. I'm gonna use these to hang the grow lights from underneath the glass shelf and from underneath the top panel piece. And then here, I got two types of weather stripping. I got this foam version and I also got this flat plastic piece version. I got both of them because I don't know which one's going to be better, especially where the hinges are on the doors. Whether this is going to work or this one, we will find out. Oh, and this was from Home Depot, by the way. And then these are from Amazon. I'll put the links to all of these products in the description box below so you can check them out. But also from Amazon, I got these two fans for the two shelves. These are actually from Lowe's and these are actually attached via magnets. So these will go underneath the top panel of a cabinet because that's made of metal. This one is also from Lowe's, a surge protector. And for the grow lights, I went with the Monios. So these are actually the T8 LED grow lights and it comes in a six pack each light is two feet long, so it should fit perfectly. Okay, so those are all of the accessories. Ikea, Home Depot slash Lowe's, and Amazon. So now, let's go ahead and put the cabinet together. I'm not gonna go into detail on how to actually put all the pieces together because I'm pretty sure it's gonna be straightforward. You know how Ikea instructions are? They don't have any words at all, it's just pictures. So we're just gonna time lapse through the whole thing, okay? So, see you later. Oh, 
Okay, so the frame is finally put together and now I just have to install the glass panels. But before I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and drill a hole somewhere around here using my hole drill bit. All right, so before I drill the hole, I'm just gonna lay down some paper in the packaging to catch any metal shavings. And I'm just gonna eyeball it. It doesn't have to be exact, but somewhere around there. All right, there it is. Ta -da. Now I hope it caught all of the shavings right there and it looks like it sort of kind of did. And the piece fell out. Try not to touch the metal shavings with your bare hands because if that gets stuck in your skin, it's not a pleasant experience. All right, so this is probably the most difficult part of the installation. It's carrying the heavy glass panels and then holding it in place while you tighten it in place. So for this part, I'm gonna be using gloves because the glass is pretty much clean at this point and I don't wanna put like my greasy, oily, dirty hands on it. So, and it also will give me extra grip. Okay, so I'm trying to find out at what height the pegboards are going to sit. I think I'll go with this. Actually, it doesn't matter where the pegboard is going to be exactly. I just need to know where to mount this fastener because that's where the glass is going to sit on. And I think it's where I want it to be. But see, this fastener basically holds the shelf, but it also holds these glass panels vertically in place. All right, so I just had lunch, but my new oven and my new microwave just got delivered. So let me go install that real quick and then we'll jump right back into this installation. I'm back. I actually went to eat dinner and took a break because I was trying to find screws. Apparently, you can't use the screws that come with the Mills bow to attach the pegboard to the screw hole because the screw is too small. Let me show you. So you're supposed to use this screw and put it into the fastener here. And then that is screwed onto the back panel so that this piece will hold the glass shelf. But you're supposed to use the same screw hole for the pegboard, or this goes in the back somehow, and then the screw goes through the front. But because this has a thickness, right, the screw is too short. So people have been using the pegboard with different size screws, and they don't really tell me what screw to use. Well, I opened the Scatus pegboard hardware, because it comes with hardware, that will let you mount it to the wall. And it comes with screws. And this is the same screw size that will fit into this screw hole for the shelf. But if we look closer, you can see that it's longer, right? But in order for this to work as a system, I am gonna need a couple of washers, apparently, to put behind the pegboard so that there's space behind the pegboard and the glass so that you're able to hang stuff through the holes in the pegboard. Okay, so good news. I think I found a system that works. So I found all of these washers that I just so had laying around in my house. And I'm gonna use four. 
So I open this tray, the SCADIS tray to be used on the pegboard. And the key is that you want enough washers to be able to clear that peg right there. So I had to go with four. Three was like cutting it really close. And then the screw will go into that. Let me show you what I mean. Okay, so this is the screw that came with the SCADIS pegboard. And I've added four washers in the back right here. And hopefully you can tell four washers will clear so that when I fasten it to the back of the cabinet, there will still be space for that peg. And I believe that's enough to actually be fastened into the screw hole. So I'm going to do that and then we'll see how that works. I only have enough washers to use with two screws. So yeah, that's my discovery. I'm going to be using these washers instead of this fastener because this is not even going to be used to hold up a shelf anyway. So I've got the four washers and the screw right here. Okay, so this is a screw that has the four washers. You can kind of see it through the hole right there. So those washers create the space behind the pegboard. And then since the pegboard comes with four of these screws, I just decided to use two more here just to help fasten it down. And you're gonna need at least two to keep it from rotating. But as you can see, it's still somewhat flimsy, um, but as long as there's these screws here, that's gonna help keep it from falling down. So I don't know if I like the height. I might have to go a little bit higher. Yeah, I, actually, I think I'm gonna go higher because the shelf is gonna go like right here. Before I do anything else, I want to put it in its final location before I start adding the rest of the shelves and pegboard. So I'm just going to clean up all of this mess that you can't see. There is a lot. And then we'll see the final resting home. Resting home? Final location of the cabinet. How does that look? Oh, hello from down below. Now I'm just going to do the exact same thing that I did up there to down here. All right, see, I even aligned the screws to be all horizontal. That's what you call attention to detail. Okay, how does it look? Bottom is pretty much the flipped version of the top. I think the last thing they do is to put on the doors. Let's move you to here. That's as far as I'm willing to get tonight because it is kind of late but this is what it's looking like so far. I put the two pegboards in with the shelving. 
And I also stuck in the two fans right there. I wish they came in white. We'll see how long these last before I actually change them to white fans. But yeah, this is what it looks like. Tomorrow I will be adding the weather stripping and the lights. And then I will finally put all the plants in there. You can watch me select what plants exactly to put in there. But yeah, that part should be super fun. But yeah, I'll see you tomorrow. Good morning. Man, this cabinet really takes a lot of effort because I want it to be perfect, but I'm sure it'll be all worth it in the end. Today, I'm gonna be setting up the weather stripping and the lights. Okay, so I just wanted to show you um, for this weather stripping. I was confused as to how to actually use it. People use it in different ways, but the way I did it is I put it down here as one piece with the sticky side on the bottom here. So you can see that this is the way it flaps. You see that? And then I cut slits out where the magnet from the door comes into contact. And this is how it closes. Like that. So I think that should work. And then on the sides here is where I used the foam weather stripping, which it comes in a pair like this, but I just decided to split it in half. That way I have more. I will have a lot left over actually. A single strip will do just fine. And this is what it looks like when I close it. Okay, so I got the weather stripping done. What the? It's not gonna be 100% weatherproof, but more like, I would say 90% weatherproof. And for the vertical piece, I taped it to this side of the door, the right side, because on this side, you do have these locking mechanisms, but I need to always remember to close the right door first and then the left door. Okay, so now it's time to install the lights. Let me see if they actually work. Ooh. Wow. Okay, lights are installed. I'm still waiting for that sleeve to be delivered today. It should come in pretty soon. But let me show you the lights. Okay, I'm gonna turn it on. Three, two, one. Wow. Now all that there's left to do, everything's all set up. The fans are actually running right now. The lights are plugged into my smart plug. And now I get to pick out what plants to actually put inside. 
I'm gonna feel so bad for the plants that I don't put in here. First of all, let me show you how empty these shelves look right now. I really need to go behind more plants, guys. For the cabinet, I tried to prioritize the struggling plants and the plants that I know need some humidity. But let's look at the cabinet now. Ta-da! Okay, so I'll give you a really quick tour. By the way, I'm really loving the contrast between the green foliage and like the red foliage coming from the begonia, the micans, the other begonia, and the philodendron pink princess right there. So some of the struggling plants that I've placed in here include the ficus tseneki, which started yellowing, or actually browning pretty rapidly so that one's in there the philodendron pink princess I think it's just giving me like really small growth as you can see right there this is the last newest leaf look at the size compared to like these leaves which are slowly turning yellow I hope that bounces back in here there is the Pilea peperomioides baby that I am looking after for my friend that is growing very, very slowly. Those are not necessarily sad plants. Look, the frizzle, frizzle? Yeah, frizzle sizzle is starting to bloom. That's really cool. I also have my Anthurium forgetii. I think it's doing fine because there is a new growth coming out right there but slowly, so I hope it thrives in here. And then down here, I have my recovering Ruby Cascade, my recovering Monstera Adansonii node. Um, so, I, okay, my Monstera elbow, the one that I combined into a bushy pot, is not really doing the best. You can start to see some of the leaves here turning yellow. I did drench it in a little bit of a, well not a little bit, but a lot of hydrogen peroxide water mix. So hopefully that kind of gives oxygen to its roots and then it'll bounce back in here. My Syngonium Albo is doing okay, but just some of the older leaves are turning yellow. My Amazonica guys, it's been dormant for a long time. but. When I moved it in here, I just noticed that new leaf right there. And it looks like it's gonna be pretty big too, so that's cool. And then here is the watermelon peperomia. A lot of cracks in the leaves. And I'm pretty sure that's due to low humidity. So hopefully in this space, it does really well. And then back there is another one of my plumerias, which is not really doing great either and then some of the plants in here that are doing good are like the silvery Anne, this Hoya Matilde which by the way I just noticed is giving me a peduncle so a flower is going to be blooming right there there's also one right there and I think there was another one somewhere maybe not and then my Crimson Princess right here. It's doing okay. It's just throwing very, very long tendrils. Like this one and this one. It was previously pretty close to one of my grow lights. And it started giving me like these very purple small leaves. So I think that's a sign of too much light. You can also tell by some of the leaves here turning yellow and pale. So 
it's kind of below this shelf so and I don't I don't think these lights are as strong even though there's two so I hope that one bounces back because it is pretty flat uh, what else yeah and a couple of my other new plants down there my parallel peperomia and my devil's backbone I believe I always forget the name of that one so yeah you can see that I turned the fan on here and everything's routed through to the back which that little gasket thingy finally came in and then some of the plants that I did not mention are like these string of turtles which I recently propagated like all the way up here because the new growth was just giving me very very tiny leaves like these right here so hopefully by propagating it it continues to push out bigger leaves because I want them to be fat and juicy like that yeah and then my previously dying slash actually just dying <laughs> my previously dying Thanksgiving cactus is finally bouncing back and I can tell it's doing really really good because the leaves are very plump and juicy so I'm really grateful for that and oh, of course my alocasia silver dragon which alocasias really do like higher humidity that spike right there should be a new leaf coming out of that pretty soon oh let me show you what I found out earlier too there's like this really fat rhizome growth thingy so I hope that turns into a really huge leaf because <laughs> that would be super exciting but yeah that's all the plants that I could fit in here I might find additional accessories to like pin additional plants and like the empty spots right there I also have these magnetic hooks that I will try to find a use for when I attach them up here and have some kind of a trailing plant somehow but yeah that's a pretty in-depth tour of my new IKEA Millsbo greenhouse cabinet I love it Alright, well that's about it for this video guys. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please do hit the thumbs up and if you haven't yet already, plant scribe. Also, let me know what you think about this setup. I will definitely do periodic updates about it. Um, it's probably not going to look like this for too long. I might be taking some plants out, adding more plants, adding more accessories and things like that. So yeah, this is kind of like a new journey for my plant parenthood. But yeah, anyway. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!